you and welcome back to Mads World. I am your host Mads and thank you for coming back for another week of the pod. If you are enjoying Mads World each week, please remember to subscribe, rate and review the podcast or share it with a friend who might enjoy it. Now, if you've watched BBC's Line of Duty, you'll know that sometimes an urgent exit is required, especially when it comes to bad dates. This week, I'm joined by Amanda, who is a social media strategist by day and an artist by night, to discuss the best emergency exits you all submitted to me to save yourself from a terrible date. Amanda is something of an escape artist herself and has some cracking smoke bomb stories and trapdoor tricks. Hello, Mandy. Hello. How are you? I'm not too bad. You know, the sun's shining, so can't complain. Yeah, I had my second vaccine this morning, so that's very exciting. It's been a great day for Mads World. Oh, congrats. Thank you. So let's start off with our speed date round, which is where we ask a couple of questions so the audience can get a good idea of who you are. So our first question this week is, if your life was a movie, what part would you watch over and over again? So it would have to be the time I went bungee jumping in Switzerland. Mm. It was just like the most incredible experience. Uh, my friend and I had gone out the night before and decided like kind of half still drunk, half hung over that we were just going to go like do this bungee jumping thing. It was the third highest one in the world. Like it was just wow. mad. Yeah, it was just such a beautiful experience. That sounds amazing. Yeah, I've actually never been bungee jumping or skydiving. I think that's one of those things that I'm I'm a pretty pretty good at being a daredevil. Like I like all roller coaster rides, I'll do parasailing, paragliding, anything. But then when it comes to jumping off stuff, I'm quite bad. <laughs> <laughs> No, it was it was just so easy to do it. Like they just carry you down three, two, one. And it was yeah. I'm very jealous that you have the the ability to do that. I honestly think that's like my biggest fear. I mean, I don't want to get through life and never do it. I think I will have to <laughs> bite the bullet at some point. Yeah, one for the bucket list. Exactly. So our next question is: Is there an area of your life where you feel like something is missing? I feel like mainly because of COVID, mm. it's like a big old hole in my social life, basically. Yeah. But now that things are like opening up and get to go into the office a bit. More, and see people like it is kind of coming back but yeah I definitely feel like that's missing that and a dog that and a dog what kind of dog would you get yeah I would love a dog (laughs) (laughs) oh I would love like a big like Great Dane or um, there's this dog called a Rhodesian Ridgeback which is just like this beautiful colour and like quite majestic dog. Amazing I'm more of a small dog girl. I love having a snuggle with a small dog. I feel like big dogs just (laughs) think that they're puppies still and they go all over the place and it's just not I'm not about it. (laughs) Oh I love that though. I love it. (laughs) Yeah I think in terms of areas of my life that I think something is missing. It would have to be holidays. I was looking today on Instagram getting some wanderlust inspo and just making myself really depressed. I actually went into the office today so I was yeah at work trying to imagine what it was like to be on holidays and I couldn't even remember so definitely holidays and um yeah I think I was thinking about this actually before I started the podcast I was thinking that I was struggling to find motivation or meaning in my life and I know that is such a deep thing to just flippantly say but Mm. I feel like having something like a weekly podcast where I have I actually have to do it because people are wanting to listen and people are following me up about it (laughs) it's giving me a lot of um a lot of meaning in my life which is yeah it's really cool but if um anyone out there is thinking of starting a podcast I definitely recommend it because it is hard work but it is very rewarding (laughs) oh that's great yeah yeah so our next question is what is your best quality oh this one is a hard one it's so hard (laughs) yeah I was like oh how do I answer this yeah um Maybe I I think my best quality is that I just throw my whole self into everything. So Mm -hmm. if there's a problem, I'm figuring out how we solve it and Mm -hmm. I'll help in like any and every way I can. Like sometimes that's like a blessing, sometimes that's a curse, but I really just kind of love that aspect. Yeah, that's such a good quality. I think I can sometimes feel a bit, I I don't know, unmotivated or lazy with stuff, but I think, yeah, I'm definitely jealous of people that put in 110% all the time because... Well, you've got the podcast motivation now. That's the thing. I've got the podcast, but even working at home, I'm so like distracted so easily. Like I just want to make a snack. Like like Netflix (laughs) is right there. It's calling my name. Like I just wish that I could (laughs) focus on one thing, but you know, that's a whole can of worms. Oh, work from home struggles. Oh, literally. Um, our second last question is how long have you been in a relationship? Just somewhere in between two and a half to three years now. Amazing. And what is the best thing about being in a relationship? Um, I think the best thing is probably just like 
just going off on that like, really odd bold tangents and just having like, <laughs> com- like moments where you're just like completely yourself and kind of don't care like yes. who's watching that's so nice to be able to share that with someone else oh my god that I totally agree with that I think finding someone you can be yourself around you don't have to pretend to be I don't know funnier than you are or smarter than you yeah. are or anything you can just be completely honest and even if you say something that might be considered problematic or weird or whatever that person is just always like in your corner I love that Exactly. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Well, I have invited you on the podcast because we caught up over drinks at the park a few weeks ago and you were telling me about some of your greatest date escape moments. And I consider you somewhat of a an escape artist when it comes to <laughs> ditching bad <laughs> dates. So if you want to start us off, you've got three different stories and then we've got some listener submissions, which are absolutely insane. So um yeah, kick us off with your first story about um, your date escape. Yes. So, okay, the first one, which is probably the one that ends up coming up in conversation the most, is <laughs> I was out at this date um, with this guy and he was, a, he was a journalist. And when we were like messaging beforehand, like he seemed really, really interesting. And I was like, great, this is going to be amazing. We meet up and go to Rose's Thai, like out in Shoreditch. I was like, Beautiful. Great. Um, and we sit down and he's just the most boring person I've ever met in my life. And I was like, wait a minute, like this doesn't match up. Um, and I was like, Oh, like I kind of question him on it. I was like, Oh, you seem a bit different. He goes, yeah. Oh, I use my journalist persona Oops. on Tinder because it's a lot more interesting than like who I actually am. Like he just admitted that. And I was like, Oh, Whoa. okay. Wait, so wait, what's a journalist persona? Does he mean he has like an alternate ego or something? Yeah, ba- apparently, like when he writes, he just takes on this this different persona, this oh yeah, God. this alter ego, basically. Um, wow. And he's a lot a lot cooler than <laughs> he was in person. <laughs> oh my God, I didn't I didn't know that was a thing. He's like Clark Kent and Superman, one on Tinder, one in real life. Yeah, exactly. But just like he wasn't even like Clark Kent level. Like he's just your average. <laughs> At least jump. Clark Kent is still like pretty good looking. <laughs> exactly. He's chiseled. He's chiseled. Oh my god, he's so <laughs> chiseled. Um, this guy was not as chiseled as Clark Kent. He wasn't bad looking, mm-hmm. but he wasn't he wasn't he was no Clark <laughs> Kent. <laughs> um, and I was just sitting there and I was like, Oh, like I'm not really feeling this. We'll see how it goes, mm-hmm. whatever. And mm-hmm. he goes to order and he goes, oh, I'll get ca- calamari. Is that all right? And up until that point, I've been told by like all of my doctors, like you are deathly allergic to like <gasps> seafood and shellfish, mm. just like avoid at all costs. <laughs> but at the same time, I also knew that my GP was just around the corner. And I was like, <laughs> right, okay. I know it takes a little while for the reaction to set in. <laughs> let's do this yeah yeah let's have the calamari that sounds no. good so I kind of sit through some more boring conversation with them and it gets to the point where I'm like okay but how would your journalist persona answer this question and I was like oh my god it's like pulling <laughs> trying to bring out the superman out of clock game exactly I was like give me something to work with uh, <laughs> but it just it just wasn't happening so they set the calamari down I'm like, okay, here we go. Take a bite. I'm kind of waiting for the reaction to set in. Oh my God. Nothing really happens. <gasps> and I'm like, oh, oh my God. shit. So you weren't allergic. Yeah, I wasn't allergic, which has been a blessing because like, <laughs> now I can eat whatever seafood I want. You know, it's a whole new world out there for me. But uh, oh my yeah, gosh. I had to sit through the rest of this really painful date. So I actually can't believe the date was so bad that you... <laughs> purposely ate seafood that you thought you were allergic to to try and get out of it but you know what at least you learned something from the date you learned that you're allowed to enjoy seafood exactly yeah one terribly boring <laughs> date opened up a whole new world for me so you know it's a win in a small oh way oh my <laughs> god <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, you have another one as well about a certain bathroom escape. So I think please regale us with this one as well. Okay. So this one is kind of, he wasn't as boring as the first guy. It was just kind of, you know, when you're like in the middle of a date, you're like four, maybe five drinks in and you're sitting there and you're like, I don't Mm -hmm. like where this is heading. I kind of just want to go home. I'd rather be in bed. I feel, yeah, you want to be in bed with a little takeaway and a little movie. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, I'd rather be watching Netflix. 
This podcast is not sponsored <laughs> by Netflix. <laughs> it could be though. Netflix, if you're listening, sponsor the pod. <laughs> <laughs> Help a girl out. But no, so I, I basically got to a point where I was like, right, okay, I just need to like have a moment to myself, like go to the bathroom, just like sit there and decide, okay, whether I want to stay for a few more drinks or whether I want to leave. And I get up and a bit like too enthusiastically grab the chair behind me. Instead of just like pushing it gently back behind me, I end up throwing it clear across the room and it just like <laughs> smashes against the table behind me. Like everyone's turning and looking oh and I'm God. like, right, okay, no, I'm really going to go now. And I just went through <laughs> past the toilet and left. <laughs> oh my God. I don't think I've ever straight up just walked out of a date I feel like this is dynamo levels of escape artistry like I don't know how (laughs) it was pure embarrassment (laughs) pure embarrassment just took hold of your body and walked you out of that restaurant (laughs) (laughs) oh my god honestly the submissions that we've got coming up some of them I'm like I I I don't know I feel like I'm pretty ballsy with stuff but then when it comes to walking away from someone or I don't know potentially hurting someone's feelings I've become a massive pussy I'm so bad with it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh no you just you just got to stop caring and then like you know what some nights yeah. are better if you just go home and uh have a takeaway and treat yourself I mean clearly they are because you're in a successful relationship and I'm not so maybe I should be walking out on more dates not gonna lie exactly yeah <laughs> walking out on dates is the key it's the key to success <laughs> oh my god and oh. your last story this is honestly <laughs> I actually can't believe you did this last one. This actually kills me. So please tell us about your sprained ankle that you got during a snowstorm. <laughs> yes. So this was a few years back. Um, it was just kind of like a, one of those like freak snowstorms in London, like oh, maybe five, <laughs> five years ago, six years ago now. But it was one of those ones where like the whole streets were just icy all over. And I had been mm-hmm. messaging this guy off of Tinder and like he was really good looking, like like came across like really well, conversation was flowing. I was like, cool. Mm-hmm. He goes, oh, you want to do something tonight? I was like, yeah, I'm down <laughs> to do something tonight. But then he, he just like immediately like shoehorned it into, oh, well, like, you know, it's there's a snowstorm outside, so you should just come to mine and then we'll just have a few drinks oh, of mine God. and see where it goes. And I was like, oh, I don't, I don't like how like, kind of presumptuous you're being at the minute honestly literally it's during winter guys become like this they get this thing or even during lockdown they're like why don't you come over and i'll make you dinner it's like you literally could be a serial killer and i don't know you <laughs> like, exactly I'm like, i've never met you i'm not gonna like just rock up at your house like and just be like yes like take me like no <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird and like what are the housemates gonna say like who's this and he's like oh you know never met her like yeah oh hiya what's your name again (laughs) yeah genuinely oh my god anyway please continue but yeah so I was like oh god no I don't want to do this like (laughs) I was like I'm not down for that but then I was like well how do I get out of this um (laughs) how do I get out of this because I already said like yes I'm down to do something tonight but no I'm not not down to like meet up with you and I kind of like said that um and he just got like well kind of like, aggressive about it oh, he's like oh, you should just come over you're not that far away like it's not too much and he just got like too too yeah too persistent too aggressive and I was not having it but I was also kind of I was really young and kind of freaking <laughs> out at the same time kind of like you were saying where you're like oh I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings yeah so sure. I was like what what is the best way that I could like park this for now maybe potentially (laughs) have it as like a a backup option to come back down the road I was like oh you know it's icy out if I sprained my ankle like there's no way I'm gonna walk anywhere even if it is a short distance (laughs) so I was like oh sorry like actually like sprained my ankle not too long ago um I don't think like I can walk somewhere like happy to like go like somewhere else like it literally made no <laughs> logical sense yeah and so uh, he, he was just like oh did you actually break your ankle or is this just an excuse and I'm stubborn and I took this as like a challenge to win basically <laughs> um <laughs> so I was like no no it really happened he's like are you serious like show me a picture so, so I got up my makeup <laughs> and like did my ankle up to look like it was like fully <laughs> swollen purple discolored <laughs> What, like, bruised? 
<laughs> yeah, like properly bruised, like veiny. Even I don't know. I was having a time. I was like, you know, time to be artistic. <laughs> oh Spending the night God. in, I might as well make an art of it. Um, <laughs> And then, yeah, I sent it over and he's actually, he's like, oh my God, do you need help? And I was like, <laughs> you need to go to the hospital. There's, you know, can see the bone. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh yeah, he was like actually God. concerned and I felt a bit bad, but I was like, you know, we're in too deep now. <laughs> you can't go back on the lie. Yeah, exactly. I was committed. I was committed. That is an absolute classic. Oh my God. Well, I think honestly, that is one of the best escape artist stories that I've ever heard. But we do have some absolute crackers that everyone submitted. So I asked, um, I had a poll on Instagram this week where I asked everyone out there listening to submit their best escape artist tactics when leaving a date. So I'll read them out. We'll do the voice disguiser that everybody loves on this podcast and we can (laughs) chat about them as we go. So here's the first one. I invited a guy over to watch Silence of the Lambs as friends and he asked if we could snuggle. I made my friend call me multiple times and pretend to be an angry, crazy ex-boyfriend who was coming over so the guy would get scared and leave. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. So this person told me as well that, like, they, they told their friend to ring and keep ringing even when she was hanging up on him and stuff. So, like, she oh first saw the phone ringing and she's like, oh, not this guy. And the guy who was there was kind of like, why? Is he bad news? She's like, yeah, he's really violent and aggressive. And then, <laughs> and then she adds and she's like, what? It's a full-on Oscar performance. Literally, she's like, what? You're coming over and you're really angry and you're going to punch anyone that you see apart from me? And the guy who's there is like, Oh no, like, is he, you know, aggressive? And she's like, well, not towards me. <laughs> He's like, I should probably <laughs> leave. <laughs> I'll be fine, but you need to go. <laughs> yeah, literally exactly that. So the fake phone call is always a it's an oldie, but it's a goodie. It's a classic, you know. It is such a classic. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what they did before mobile phones, you know, like did they have to like get their tin can with a string out and get their friend to call? Like, did they have, <laughs> have to get someone to like page them? I I don't know. Oh my god, could you imagine page escapes? Oh, <laughs> Page escapes like 911. <laughs> yeah. oh, all right, here's our next one. I said I needed to get home in time for the line of duty finale. So this one is fair enough. Did you watch the line <laughs> of duty finale, Mandy? I didn't. You know what? I have been, I haven't gotten into line of duty yet, but I have it like planned up for like one weekend where I just don't feel like doing anything and I'm just going to binge it all in one go. Honestly, if you're out there listening people and you've not seen line of duty yet, please watch it. Message me. I will talk to you about it until the cows come home. I bloody love that show. So this person (laughs) play on, that is a great escape tactic. And that person should have respected your decision. Here's the next one. (laughs) Said I had my period and needed to leave suddenly. I've used this one. I've used this one as well, but I don't think I would use it on a date. I I feel like boys get way too scared by periods unnecessarily. That's true. Yeah. We we were at Glastonbury one time. We were working there. I think it was 2018 or 2019. We're working there as stewards alongside security guards. And one of the girls we were working with, she had left something in her tent or she wanted to leave her shift early or something. So she went up to her bosses who were the big, like fat security guards that were these huge blokes. And she just, she just goes, oh my God, I've got my period. It's going everywhere. I have to go back to the tent. And the guy, they were like, ew, ew, just go, just go. Like these huge <laughs> blokes who like have like tattoos and stuff. And like, you know, they've, oh my they've probably just been smashing drugs all of Glassbury. And <laughs> she literally said the yeah. word period. And they were like, ew, ew, go. <laughs> it's like too much oh. for their precious little ears. It works for everything, you know? <laughs> yeah, it is a great little excuse, that one. I faked a phone call from my friend who was in the same bar as me. So that is really convenient. Your friend was in the same bar. You can just roll up to her and say, hey, call me in three minutes and then sort that one out. The fake phone call never fails. It's just the logistics of that one. Like, could you imagine if they were just like in the booth behind (laughs) them? Like, (laughs) you're at the other end of this call. Wait a minute. (laughs) Wait a second. You guys are on the phone. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Right, here's the next one. This one <laughs> this one is so funny. My mum called saying my grandma had died, but she was already dead. She died five years ago. <laughs> oh, God. 
<laughs> I mean, it's not a lie, technically. <laughs> it's what her grandma would have wanted, I assume. <laughs> She would have been like, oh. you know what, <laughs> on her deathbed being like, you know what, girl, if you ever need to get out of a bad day, you call, you get your mum to call and say I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> she put it in her will. <laughs> put it in her will. But you know what, you're right, it wasn't a lie. <laughs> I teed up my Uber driver and he rolled up with the door already open for me to just jump straight in. <laughs> This is so That's funny. great. Like, what an Uber driver. That's five-star rating, hands down. Five-star, three-pound tip. Like, <laughs> you're getting all of the ratings. That is amazing <laughs> service from Uber. I don't think Bolt drivers would be doing that. Uber is my number one now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I just said, you're not my type. Sorry, bye. <laughs> The bravery here is admirable. Yeah. It's not something I would be capable of doing. I respect it, but I do not understand <laughs> it. I'm too nervous to do this. No, I would not be capable of that. I would, oh, my God, no. <laughs> I would clearly fake something. <laughs> <laughs> you're more the type to eat a seafood you're, de- you're deathly allergic to rather than just say, I don't like you, bye. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, God, the bowls, though. I wish I had them. I said I needed to make it to the shops before a bank holiday closing time for Lou Roll. So in the pandemic, I understand this. Lou Roll is in short supply and it's hard to get. I don't know if I'd believe this if someone said it. That just sounds like a really bad excuse or that you have explosive diarrhea. Yeah. I want to know what they said back, you know, like how do you how do you answer that and be like, okay? Okay, bye. <laughs> yeah. So uh Shall I call you? <laughs> <laughs> Should I call you? Uh, I can. I've got Lou Roll at mine. Um, okay, <laughs> see ya. <laughs> All right, here's the next one. I said I was going to throw up because I was so hungover and had and had had an hour's sleep. So I relate to this one very heavily. I totally know what it's like to have one hour sleep and be so hungover because that used to be my life. But now that I'm sober, I would not be able to use this one. So if you're sober and you're listening, don't try this because they will know. They know you're lying. <laughs> I mean, if you could fake it, though, I mean, it could work. Oh, yeah, if you could fake it, I mean, ideally. But I'm one of those people that just can't throw up. Even, like, if I try so, so hard, I just end up coughing and, like, maybe sneezing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, coughing's not a bad way to get out of a date these days. That's true. I could have COVID. I mean, not now that I'm vaccinated, but, you know, maybe I, they wouldn't know that. Right, here's our next one. I walked her to the station and at the barriers said, I can't get home from here. It was Piccadilly Circus. <laughs> Everyone can get oh. home from there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know anywhere in the whole of England that you couldn't get home to from Piccadilly Circus. I think you could even get to France. <laughs> and you've got you've got other options as well. You could like quickly jump on a different train. Like, I feel like there, there are other exit routes. <laughs> Quite literally. <laughs> it's too obvious, but that one is funny as. Um, <laughs> 20 minutes into the date, I got the ick because he had a weird voice. I texted my friend and got her to pretend she was locked out so I could leave ASAP. This is a clever one because if your, fr- if your housemate one. is locked out, you do have to just go home. Like there's no other way that you can that she can get in. I would say yeah. this is a really good excuse if you're looking for one. Yeah, this is the most <laughs> believable I'd say by far. <laughs> Definitely. And our very last submission is, this one is, just do not try this at home. I just legged it once. (laughs) So this person genuinely just ran away. Um, (laughs) They were together and she just ran away, just started running, started legging it, (laughs) gone. (laughs) Blocked him on the run, you know. (laughs) Literally. So, yeah, I wouldn't try this one at home. Quite mean, but effective, some would argue. It does the job. It does the job. So those are all of our submissions, Mandy. (laughs) This has been a very enjoyable pod. Do you have any last words you'd like to leave listeners with? Yeah, don't don't do what I did and create really unbelievable excuses to leave a date because clearly people were suspicious. (laughs) 
people were suspicious and also do not try eating seafood when you are deadly allergic. Yeah. That is a huge do not try this at home. That is probably a much better piece <laughs> of wisdom to end on. Oh, my God. All right. Well, this has been fun and I'll chat to you soon, Mandy. Oh, I'd love this. Thank you so much, Mandy. Bye. I hope you enjoyed my chat with Amanda. Please let me know on my Instagram at madsworld.mp3. If you have any stories or thoughts of your own to share or on my website, it's madsworld.co. Love and elbow taps. Peace.